We are on filmsgonewild.com. My name is John Wildman, and we are going to be talking about the film Monkey Beach, which is screening at the San Luis Obispo International Film Festival. And we have the director, Loretta Todd here. Loretta, welcome to the show. Hi, thanks for inviting me. Happy to be here. All right, um, I'm excited to talk about the, the film, um, but we want to start off by having you introduce our audience to Monkey Beach. They have not seen the film as yet, so uh, why don't you tell everybody what Monkey Beach is about? Monkey Beach is based on a book by Eden Robinson, who's a Heisler Hills uh, writer here in Canada. It was uh, her first novel. Um, it was a novel that went on to become a bestseller. It was published in seven countries. Somewhere along the line, someone said to me, Gee, Loretta, her writings, like your filmmaking, which I guess they mean kind of elliptical, not very conventional. So I thought, oh, okay. So I looked into it, I optioned it, and it took me 15 years to get where I am. Um, it tells the story of a young woman, um, Lisa Marie in the book, Lisa in the film, who has these unusual supernatural powers that um, she has feared all her life, but now she has to embrace them and she's to help her brother um, who's been lost at sea. Right. Uh, and it, it, it is, um, it's unusual. I mean, not super unusual, but, but as far as like kind of what we're, we're, we're given as um, uh, in, in, in film these days, it's been a while since I've seen um, a film that plays with um, uh, both mixing, you know, kind of supernatural elements as well as you know your um, uh, your 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 family drama aspects and what have you, um, which I enjoyed quite a bit. Uh, but it is you are adapting a very notable book, and and there there are specific challenges to doing that as a filmmaker. Uh, and I would love for you to start off the interview talking about that. Um, talk about the challenges um, in in doing that, and and even and and add to that. The particular personal pressure that you kind of felt or personal responsibility you felt toward Eden Robinson? Well, I think any person who adapts a book is, you know, knows that there's going to be those people who love the book and will hate the film and that the film will always never be the book. Um, so I never set out to try to make the book. Actually, I did. I tried to turn it into a miniseries about 10 years ago, took it to one of the broadcasters who eventually did turn her uh, latest books into a series. Um, but at the time, I guess, I'm usually a little ahead of the curve and they didn't feel that an indigenous woman could lead up a, a mini series based on um, Monkey Beach. Um, because in that way, I would have been able to get into the more into depth, more into elements in the story that I had to leave out, um, go deeper into some of the characters, deeper into the place, the amazing place that is the Heisla Nation. There's all these beautiful, um, places like the kit lobe that appear in the book that I just couldn't couldn't be there like you know be in, in the film um so yeah and I was ahead of the curve so I was also trying to make the film um before there were any indigenous feature film programs here in Canada um so even though people said yeah you know it's a great book and you know we love you as a filmmaker I knew it was going to be a struggle it was it was it was a long struggle um I tried to instead get the essence of the book the essence of the storytelling the idea of this elliptical journey through time, um, this idea that um, she has to embrace her medicine. Um, so the film is really about, you know, even deal with dealing with, you know, family dramas and the social realism of our lives as Indigenous people because of colonization and racism and oppression and so on. And in the end, I wanted it to be a film where people could feel that, you know, this, this person was on her journey to embrace her, her medicine, just like we all can embrace our medicines. Um, within. Um, so, um, so yeah, so that was the, that was the journey. Um, what was the other part of the question? He said, oh yeah, I felt a great deal of responsibility to Eden because in fact, in, when I picked up the book, finally, um, she acknowledges me, even though she'd never met me. She had used one of my films as research for one of the characters in the book. Um, and I'll go also, I guess, as someone who persevered. So that was inspirational to her. Um, and also it was really important to me to make the film in the village where the story was born. And that added another layer of complication because the village is like an 18, 19 hour drive from Vancouver. Um, it's, um, so even though I hired as many people as I could in the, in the area, I still had to bring a lot of crew and equipment up. 
So that, of course, cost, um, you know, a lot. So the budget, but that was still critical to me because I thought I needed to have the village, the people, the Heisler Nation feel that this belonged to them. Um, and of course, to, you know, to, to Eden and her family, but that there was a sense of, that they were, they were part of this, part of making of this film. You almost have a greatest hits lineup of actors in this film uh, of, of Native American Native American actors. They're just um, just an amazing lineup. And uh, uh, I used to be uh, good friends with uh, um, uh, Jerry Arredondo, who is an uh, actress who's done uh, quite a, a number of uh, independent films back in the day. And uh, and of course Heather Ray is a, 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 a just a, a friend and, and and someone that I don't work with PR and. I'm always, I'm always very happy when I see a project like this that where, where it's almost like a playground for some of these actors that, that, I, that I know and love. And I know they don't get to really do as much as, as I think that they would wanna do and that, that, that I love seeing them do. And, and I would love for you to talk, take a moment and talk about, you know, uh, you know Adam and, and other other folks in in the cast and working with them and you know and the ability to you know to, to have them be able to revel in this you know in in Eden Robinson's world. Well, I think that um, you know some of the people that I cast were people that I'd known, like Nathaniel Cand and I started off at the same time. I mean, we, Basically, I got a film school and I made a film about Native War veterans. He was, he was, it was his first film, um, major film anyways. I mean, it was recreations. It was kind of my experimental, you know, way of interpreting a documentary, but, you know, he was there. And I always knew I wanted to work with him. I, we're probably related somewhere along the way as well. <laughs> not, not, you know, we're both kind of from the same area in Alberta, but so, um, you know, so I always knew I wanted to work with him. Stephanie Mathias is somebody who, Back in the day, I mean, we've been trying to make films here. Or I have, anyways, you know, for a while, and uh, I had actually had been asked to, to direct a, a film, um, and I had auditioned her, and um, you know, always hoped one day to work with her. Um, I was also particularly, you know, keen because, as much as you say, this is sort of like these great actors. So many of them are really from where I'm from, which is, you know, Cree and Métis and and, and uh, Soto, and um, you know, all the people who are not coastal. West Coast people. Um, so I was very conscious of trying to include as many West Coast people as I could as well, so that it, they again that sense of ownership that that you know the, the, the partnership or the you know the reflection of the people who are from the land that you know are in the film. Um, so yeah, it was. I mean, I, I you know, I, I think that one of the things actually I was speaking to a group of students recently, and they that was sort of a question that came up: how did I get to that place to keep those actors be doing the kind of level of performance that they did. I mean, every one of them are remarkable actors in themselves. Every one of them had done amazing jobs in their things, but I knew that as a director, I could get them to places that perhaps they hadn't had a chance to really go before. And um, one of the things that I realized I have um, within me for whatever reason, part, part of its maturity, you know, I, you know, I think, uh, you know, I, I'm going to stand up for being a matriarch, you know, for being an Indigenous woman matriarch that, you know, isn't, you know, isn't emerging and young. I've been making films for a while now, but I think that's a strain that as a matriarch, I bring a, 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 my own confidence and my own sense of self um, and that I was determined to make this safe place for the actors where they, they you know, I think of storytelling as a sacred act. And, and it's important to me as a filmmaker to create that space, that sacred space, so that these actors could go deep into those characters and into those, those roles and to really, you know, take those words um, that Eden wrote and some I wrote and the writers wrote and make them alive, make them alive, make them be, you know, um, the words that, need, that, you know, transcend the page. And I, I think I did that. I think I really did that. And that was, you know, um, preparation, you know, being being a good director, having everything blocked and ready to go, and you know, in my mind, visualized, um, so that they knew that, you know, they could be, they, that they could trust me, and I think that really what it comes down to that they knew that I wouldn't let them look bad, that I would do everything to get to where they needed to go to do that level of performance, and it wasn't easy because the shoot was very short. 
I sometimes only had, you know, I could only do two takes, you know, so I had to be that prepared so that everything could flow and that their performances could be the best that they could be. Right. And, you, and also, and I think about Grace in particular, you know, because so much is, you know, is on her shoulders, um, you know, and, and, you know, and, and, and imagining, you know, again, and, and of course, I don't, I, you know, I didn't know, like, you know, what your shoot schedule was, but imagining that it's a lot to, to work through a lot of pages and a lot of stuff to work through in a short amount of time. And man, if she doesn't nail it, then the film doesn't nail it, right? <laughs> well, it was a 20 day shoot, just so you know. Um, and yeah, I mean, I think it partly is in casting, you know, um, you know, knowing that she would best inhabit a, that role. Uh, not to say that there weren't other great actors who could do the same or take it, take it in a different direction. And I've been at this film, trying to make this film for, for such a long time that, you know, some of the actors I would have liked to work with in the past, I couldn't anymore because it was, you know, 10 years later, right. um, although they're still lovely and young and, and everything. But, uh, but, but for, you know, Lisa had to be very iconic. Um, she had to be somebody who um, is aware of that spiritual journey that the character's on. Uh, I like to think of Grace as she's embraced her own medicine already. She's a very, very, you know, powerful person in her own right. And it was also a film in which, because of the script, the things that so many things that had to be left out, I knew it was going to have to be carried by someone who could just be very cinematic, but also be very much in the moment and that the camera had to love so that we could, you know, because sometimes all she, it's, it's really just her, her look. It's, you know, it's what she's experiencing at the moment. And it can be overdone, it can be underdone. It's just that real subtleness that had to happen. And, I, you know, she asked me to call, I asked her, do you want me to call you Grace or Lisa on set? And she said, Lisa. So she did, she really did in many ways become Lisa. And she loved the place. She loved Kitimat, the village. The people were so good to us. Um, so I think all those things helped uh, bring it to, to, into being. Um, a cinematographer, you know, at one point there was a scene, shot and she thought, oh, she might make it look ugly. And I said, you know, um, as much as uh, I said, I would never do anything to make you look ugly. And I said, and the cinematographer even more so. So I think there was, um, you know, just, it's, it's a lot of, you know, reassurance and that, that idea of, of them knowing and, and, and her knowing that I said to her, in fact, I said, you know, this isn't about me being a star this is about you being a star so those are some of the things that i think helped you know bring well, the performance I mean, about yeah i mean i mean you know, and she she excels in that role um and uh you know and 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 and, and really you know talk about pin, pin, you know pinning your hopes on on the uh on, on the right candidate to be the fulcrum for your story uh well well, well done on that um and and the film as a whole again you know uh you know, that's, you know, you know, taking on, you know, a novel like that uh, with the challenges um, to, you know, to keep a dramatic structure and yet keep all of the nuances um, within it, uh, it, you know, is also a really a, a quite an accomplishment. Uh, congratulations on that, uh, Loretta. Oh. Um, and Thank again, the, the film is Monkey Beach, uh, screening at San Luis Obispo International Film Festival. I'm talking with Loretta Todd, uh, the filmmaker, and it's been really, really nice talking to you about this film in the process. Great, nice to talk to you as well. And I, I really appreciate your thoughtful questions. Thank you. Absolutely.